have to hold it. Okay. Is that mine on there? Perfectly. You don't even know. I swear. You can come. You can come stand over okay. here and look for stuff. All right. All right. <clears throat> so we are here with Nathan Panther, who played uh, professional baseball in the minor leagues and also played for the Muscatine High School baseball team in. Oh, uh, 97, 98, 99, 2000. So he played, graduated in 2000. So tell us a little bit about yourself, how you grew up playing baseball, and how you kind of got started. Yeah, so I'm originally from Muscatine. Grew up uh, down kind of next to the ball fields down there. So uh, spent a lot of time down in Kenstein Park when I was a kid, um, playing a lot of pickup games and, and, and stuff like that with the, with the guys. But... Um, yeah, graduated uh, from Muscatine High School in 2000. Um, from there, went uh, two years to MCC Community College. Um, there, I was lucky enough to get uh, drafted by the Indians after my sophomore year. Um, so that was 2002 draft. Uh, I got drafted in the 15th round. So from there, went and played professional baseball. I was 20 years old. Um, Pretty uh, naive to the world, I would guess. Didn't uh, really venture out a lot outside of, uh, you know, the Midwest. And um, hopped on a plane, went down to uh, to uh, Burlington, North Carolina. So that was uh, our rookie ball team was down there. Um, played seven years in the minor leagues. Uh, got as high as Triple A. Played a lot of time in Double A. But um, um, after that was done, uh, I think it was 2008 is when uh, uh, that kind of ran dry on me and um, went back to school, went up to the University of Iowa, got my degree in business management, um, got hired on down at Hahn, uh, was, was there for about a year and a half, and then just uh, I'm at Musco now, Musco Sports Lighting, so kind of getting back into the, uh, the sports arena, selling some sports lighting. Um, I'm a sales coordinator there. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of uh, my life in a nutshell. Um, baseball was was uh, was a lot of fun um, and a big part of my life. So, so when you were first drafted, um, like necessarily, what were you given contract-wise, like a signing bonus and then like a rookie contract? And then if you were able to go to the next level, the contracts that would be available to you when you if you moved right. Uh, good question. A, a lot of a lot of people probably don't understand how uh, professional baseball works because it's different than probably any other sport. You know, football. Uh, it's a limited amount of draft. Basketball is a draft. It's all on TV, and you know it's you know five rounds in football, and everybody knows everybody. In baseball, there's you know 50 rounds, um, so it's a lot different. There's a there's a lot less uh, notoriety, so to speak. Um, so I was drafted in the 15th round. Uh, when I was uh, after I got drafted, they they brought a scout out, and, and we talked, and we ended up coming up with a with a signing bonus. Um, for me so that's like your first part of your compensation would be a signing bonus another part of the compensation that they do is they pay for my schooling after after baseball was done so i got my so when i went back to iowa to, to get my degree that was covered by by major league baseball and what they do is they all the teams will put money into a fund and uh be able to draw out of that fund um so you have your signing bonus that was the original then you know your your day-to-day -day salary in the minor leagues is uh, not a lot so you're living pretty much paycheck to paycheck um, if you're just counting on that salary which a lot of people are you know there's uh, not a lot of kids that will, will sign with that big signing bonus that that uh, they're able to kind of live off for a while uh, us, us regular regular <laughs> Joe's kind of got to eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and kind of get by and uh, yeah, your compensation kind of goes up from from rookie ball to low A, high A, double A, you, you know, you get pay increases with each jump. Um, uh, but you really don't, you know, if you're, if you're a career minor leaguer, uh, you're, you're not making, you're not making much. You're, it's a, it's a day to day kind of grind. Uh, but you know, the carrot at the end of the stick is that big league contract. You know, if you get up there for, uh, one, two games, a whole year, um, you know, it kind of sets you up for, for life financially. So, uh, that's what everybody kind of strives for, not only just playing the game, but obviously compensation is a big part of that too. So, 
So when you were playing in the minors, um, if you had an agent or didn't have an agent, what did you have to buy clothing-wise, equipment-wise, and food-wise, um, or what was given to you by the team? Right, so equipment-wise, um, the team will pay for your bats, you know, your, your regular uh, stock kind of kind of bats. If you wanted to uh, get a get certain kind of bats, they they'd uh, they'd give you a kind of a per diem for, per bat up to a certain amount. So you get your bats for free, but really other than that, everything else is kind of relied upon yourself. So um, your cleats, gloves, batting gloves, um, uh, anything like that. You know, if you don't have an agent. A lot of times, if you have an agent, you can you that agent will will cover you for that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but if you don't have an agent, it's it's kind of out of pocket. So, um, just another kind of you know, kind of thing where the minor leaguers kind of get stuck with is, you know, we don't get the all the amenities that they do in the big leagues. Obviously, you know, David Ortiz and uh, everybody else, they're not buying their own bat and gloves <laughs> and shoes. They're getting them stocked in their lockers before games. So. Um, yeah, it's a you gotta you gotta pretty much put everything out of pocket. In your opinion, baseball today, would you say it's on the upswing, downswing, or kind of just staying where it is and just kind of putting along? You know, I think baseball's on the right path now. I think um, you know they got into the and everybody knows the kind of steroid era of baseball. Um, a little back background into the minor leagues is, um, you know, we got tested five to six times a year mandatory uh, random drug tests and, and everybody got tested and the entire team um, under that same time in the big leagues uh, they they were doing random drug tests where they really weren't testing it was it was pretty much a uh, they turned a blind eye to it and um, kind of just shuffled it off and knew that you know the home runs and 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 a lot of strikeouts are what People, people love to see in the stands, but you know, I think they've done a good thing here, doing doing more drug testing. It's gotten back to more of a natural game, where it's more strategy, less relying on home runs, more, you know, good solid baseball players. And I think the baseball that um, they're putting out right now in the in, in the MLB is pretty good, pretty competitive, and uh, exciting to watch. So I, I'm I'm pretty happy with where it's at right now and where it's going, um, and uh, I'm glad. Baseball's kind of uh, gotten out of that era and turned the page onto something new. So, so given you being a high school baseball player, played college baseball, played a little bit of professional baseball, and then you know moved on with your life and went to school and whatever, do you think that playing baseball helped you become type the type of person you are and as successful as you are in a different field because you had the experience right. of going through hardships and stuff like that? I think definitely. I think um, I think any anybody that plays a sport and, and is competitive, um, and especially plays at maybe a higher level, uh, understand kind of the dedication that it takes to become good at something and, and great. And it's not always uh, talent. And you know, I coach high school baseball. I coach you, Tyler. We talk about it a lot. Um, work ethic and and um, your day to day activities and and, and setting goals. And, and going to achieve those goals, I mean, that's that's what makes a good player. Uh, it's that constant grind. And, and once you kind of get that ingrained into your body uh, and, and kind of mind and soul, once you kind of make that next step, it's, it's a natural transition that you're always going to try to uh, be better than you were the day before. It's that competitive drive that, you, that, that I think you have in being an athlete that um, – that, I wouldn't say necessarily gives you an advantage over anybody else, but um, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt that uh, that you have that drive to succeed and and uh, that that willingness to prepare and and study and and do everything it takes to get you to where you want to go. Um, so yeah, I, I think for me personally, I, I think it, it really has molded me into the kind of person I am, the, the way that I set goals and, and and strive to achieve the goals and and go about my day-to-day -day business, I'd say absolutely, yeah, it's it's 100% ingrained into, into who I am, so yeah. All right, well, that's all I have for you, so. All right. Thank you very much. All right, yep.